Didn't record on the camera, but I recorded the audio. That's great. All right, we're starting again. Hello, welcome back. Thanks for watching. My name is Brad, and today we're going to have a little peek through my camera bag. And this is going to be fairly catch-all. I would say this is what I would take to most, if not all, shoots. Um, rig, like, I would say this is what I take to most shoots, either wedding or portfolio, like editorial sort of um shoots that sort of thing this is going to be pretty pretty much catch all pretty much for everything that i would do here we go first thing i'm going to talk about is what i take for film photography and this is really simple because my kit is pretty limited now i take these two cameras firstly the leica m6 of course or what else are you going to take when you own one when you have one you take it everywhere so this is pretty much the workhorse for film photos on a wedding day a fashion shoot anything that i will ever need for film photography this is the camera that i am picking incredible camera super fun super fast reliable had no issues built-in light meter this 50 millimeter lens is bonkers it's my favorite one i just haven't used this lens nearly as much as i wanted to and i'm going to talk about that in another video as well as the 50 mil sumicron lens we have the voigtlander 28 millimeter lens um, it's like the ultron mark ii razor sharp super fun really exciting dance floor photos that i take with this um, some of my favorite dance floor photos are with some black and white film this camera 20 mil 28 mil lens and amazing combination feels homey feels fun and it's enjoyable second film camera that i will take to a wedding day though it might not get as much use is the contax t2 now i won't say this is a sleeper but it's been talked about a lot less lately. I feel like most people have kind of gone over the Contax T2 sort of thing. I mean, like, is it worth the money to briefly touch on those things? No, it's not worth the money. This is my second one. I broke one, but most things that in life are fun are not worth the money. It's not worth $1,500 or whatever it is. However, it has increasingly proven its versatility and usability, which would push me in the other direction. Um, simply ease of use for this is just so high and impressive um, it is literally a point and shoot so anyone can use it I gave it to my girlfriend while she went to Hawaii and she was able to use it and um, I really like her photos from it because I had them developed um, she's done a really good job and she's not a photographer she's just you know she's just a gal and it was great <laughs> So that's the second one I take, as well as I will pair both of these with either some Kodak color film and then Ilford HP5. HP5 is the go-to and I have covered that extensively. Moving right along, getting into the digital kit now, I'm going to start with the Leica Q2. This is the camera that I will take to my grave, maybe. Um, this is the only camera that I ever want to use in terms of like work or whatever like it's the only one i want to use because it's so small the colors come out really nice i really like using it it's fun it doesn't feel too invasive when i'm working with other people or when i want to be a little bit quiet when i want to be a bit stealthy um, it just gets everything right for me and i wouldn't change anything about it but this does lead the question will i upgrade to the q3 probably not Canon kit. The Canon kit is the largest section of this video as it is the system that I've invested in the longest. At the moment, I am running three to four lenses. That's it, really simple. Um, I have one prime lens and so we're gonna jump right into the. First of all, this is my only prime lens. It is the 50mm RF f1.2. Um, unbelievable lens every time I use it. I am reminded why I like using it because it is so infinitely sharp and the contrast is really nice. The color rendition is beautiful and I honestly can't fault this lens at any, at any point. I don't think I could fault this lens. I think it is near, near perfect. And you can fight me in the comments on that if you would like to. The second piece of the Canon kit is gonna be this 70 to 200. And this will shock you, but it is not the RF one. This is the EF Mark II lens. So it's not even the most recent EF mount one, but it kills, it slays. 
Yas Queen. It's a great lens. It's a little less used than I might pick up the 50 or like a 24 to 70. It's kind of on the back foot in terms of usability. It's just not as versatile, but I have fallen in love with this. I do use it for fashion. It's good fun. And if it's, if I'm looking for maybe an alternative angle or if I've kind of exhausted all the angles that I might want with like a 50 or 28 or whatever, I'll switch to this at a ceremony or something just to get some different angles, guest reactions at a ceremony or a reception. Um, or if I just want to shoot super high fashion, I'll chuck this on and it gives a different look. So yeah, this is the EF Mark II with the EF to RF adapter. And um, yeah, I can't complain. I haven't used the RF1. I don't think I want to spend like $4,000 on the RF1, regardless of its specs or the size or anything like that. I like this one. There's just no real point for me to change it given my usage of it. So I love this lens, wouldn't change anything about it. You don't have to always buy the most recent stuff, guys. I think it was like 1200 bucks on Marketplace. So I'm fine with that. <laughs> Second last lens that I'll talk about here is the 24-7 f2.8. I think this is the best zoom lens that Canon's done for RF. Like I said, haven't tried the 70-200, can't confirm, but in terms of versatility, usability, sharpness, color rendition contrast, I think this is about as good as it gets. People love the f2 variant. It's not for me, it's too heavy. No lens should be that heavy. Like, it's, it's just not for me. I had it once, I have friends who have it, and every time I want to remind myself why I don't own it, I just pick theirs up for like two minutes and go, oh, ew, no, I don't wanna hold this. I don't wanna carry this around for eight or nine hours a day. It's not for me. So this is perfect, f2.8 is plenty bright. If I ever need anything brighter than that, I have the 1.2, so low light, no problem, we got it covered. But this is definitely the lens that I would say is on the R5 the most. It is the most frequently used lens that I have and I will die on this hill. You could probably survive a whole wedding day with just this lens as interchangeably as you could with the F2. Personally, I think it is sharper than the F2. I have edited files from my own experience with using the F2 and I absolutely have noticed that this one is better in terms of the sharpness so your experience may vary this is just mine i like the 2.8 a lot more than the f2 and the last lens so i might have lied a little bit and said that the 50 was my only prime lens the last lens that i have which gets very very little use is the 100 millimeter macro lens and this one is again the ef version not the rf version but again hardly hardly use this lens it is um it's a specialty lens just if i ever need it it's there if i ever need to shoot products or super super macro stuff i used it once for some wedding styling recently and the only other application that i could think of using it regularly for would be to be doing some dslr film self-scanning which is something that i've sort of played with the idea of for a little while just haven't got around to it yet. I did intend to buy this lens for that exact purpose and it just hasn't happened yet. I haven't just haven't really found the time to learn how to scan um, and process every roll of film that I've done in the last few months. So that wraps up the Canon camera kit other than the flash that I have which is not that exciting. It's like that I'm borrowing it honestly because my flash died. A buddy lent me his flash, so it's not mine, I can't include it. My only notes on that are I would love to buy the Profoto A10, just again, it's expensive and I'm not ready to jump into that just yet. So that's where I'm going with that. Pretty much wraps up my whole camera kit for a wedding, bar maybe a handful of items that I don't really feel like talking about, like SD cards or batteries or chargers, that sort of stuff. This is the bulk, this is where I would say most of my time is spent is with these items that I've talked about and honestly I wouldn't change anything at the present time. I'm really really happy with where this kit is at the moment. Maybe the T2 gets shifted out the door one day, who knows, I might 
change my mind and buy another one one day because they're so fun but yeah this is pretty much the whole kit if you have questions if you have recommendations please um, feel free to comment below if you think my assessment of the 28 to 70 f2 is wrong um i don't want to hear about it because i think i'm right on this one <laughs> sorry <laughs> and i hope you've enjoyed the video i know people like camera bag videos um, the only other thing that I would talk about is the actual camera bag itself, but I don't like the bag itself because we are on this perpetual journey as photographers to find the perfect camera bag that will suit all situations, but frankly, there is not one. There isn't a minimal camera bag that can also take the maximum load. There's not a maximum load camera bag that's small enough to be a minimal camera bag. It's just the pendulum that is forever swinging in the camera bag photographer's life. So... I guess that's my existential crisis for today.